Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to October 28, 2024. The market has just closed. Local time is 3.16 p.m. So the closing auction finished about five or six minutes ago. Haven't really had a look at the market since it opened or just after it opened. I didn't expect any significant uh, movement in the markets today. That's why I didn't really pay attention. And that has been confirmed. Uh, XJO up a little bit. All tax had a gate or, or tax had a good day. Uh, re, resources had a good day. Not surprising, although I'm pretty sure oil is down based off some of the news flow I have seen uh, today in regards to Israeli uh, strikes on Iran and they missed uh, oil. Something to do with oil, oil facilities. They missed oil facilities and thus uh, oil is down. Okay, so the agenda for today's video will uh, follow the similar. A path I usually do in these sort of videos. We'll have a look at some of the um, economic and ASX news that I might have missed today via training economics and capital brief. And then we'll have a look at the ASX today, looking at the best and worst performing indices, sectors, and also companies. And then we'll go into the top five stocks of the day. It is mining heavy. In fact, the top three companies are mining companies, and one of them is pretty big. Two of the other companies have released their Appendix 5B today, newly in production, I think, and I have a feeling both, at least one, has disappointed the market, uh, and that could be the company that I put in number one. Anyway, it remains to, remain to be seen if that has happened, and then if I have any time, I'll do or go through some of your comments. Now, I need to keep this video under about 45 minutes. Okay, so let's get stuck into it, and I don't really want to ramble because I am... Not wouldn't say short on time, but I am time constrained, and I do tend to ramble sometimes. Okay, let's go to trading economics. Okay, so oil sinks as Israeli strikes avoid Iranian crude facilities. I did notice crude oil down 4.63% uh, today, says on Monday. Uh, in fact, we can have a look at oil right here. Now, that's the wrong one. Markets, where's my market? Here it is, oil down below $70. Yeah, it has fallen today. So let's see, let's just have a look at how some of the oil companies on the ASX has performed. Now, I took a position in Croon for some reason. Oh, it's not down. Um, that's a bit of a shock. What about Santos? It's down a little bit. I expected these companies to be down a heaps. Did the Australian market knew this was going to happen? Does the Australian market have some sort of, I uh, wouldn't say telepathy, maybe a time machine that they can see the future? Uh, that sort of thing, because I expected these three companies to be down big because oil's down. I, okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Uh, anything else in the economic news today? Talking about Thai exports rising less than expected. Uh, nothing of really of note here. Or yen falls as ruling coalition loses majority. I actually did know about that. And US 10 year yield hits fresh three month high. Okay, so nothing of note there. Uh, probably the only one was that oil, and you can see a lot of red when it comes to oil and oil-related uh, stuff like gasoline and natural gas. Uh, natural gas down 3.23%, heating oil down 3.43%, gold, silver down, copper down. What is up? Steel is up, and lumber too. Okay, let's go to capital brief. I just want to see, because I haven't really been paying attention to any news flow today, apart from one. I did hear one. Uh, anyway, um, that might have been released. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is just have a look at some of the market sensitive announcements that have been released since about 1017. Uh, so for instance, Mithril Silver and Gold did a placement, 12.5 million placement. I actually did not know that. Uh, other, I'm looking for other quality activities and cash flow reports. Uh, like Phineas released their Appendix 4C, Excite Technology also released their Appendix 4C. Uh, and I'll do, I'll go through these once I finish recording this video. Resonance Health, have released their Appendix 4C. One, I am looking forward to seeing how they are performing. And, and yeah, here's the announcement I did uh, read because I did get a lot about this. Mosaic Brands, appointment of voluntary administrators. So I will talk about Mosaic Brands because it is in top five stocks of the day. Uh, and oh, that, nothing there. Or local, Locality Planning Energy Holdings released their Appendix 4C at 4.11 p.m. Just missed the closing auction. Anyway. So let's go back to Capital Brief, BHP. I'll talk about BHP when we get to the top five stocks of the day, just like Mosaic Brands. 
Uh, Earth or Dick secures 6.1 million seed round seed funding round. I might have a look at that. Whatever it is, don't have time right now. Uh, Min Res shares rally. Whitehaven Coles share extend. Uh, ResMed extends gains as Wilson's advisory hikes price target. Uh, ASX Energy stocks fall as crude prices tumble. Well, I just had a look, and did they fall? No. Metcash shares tumble on a Macquarie City downgrades. Uh, Metcash has been under literary pressure recently, and you can see what happens when broker firms decide to downgrade. Now, there is a possibility they decided to downgrade because the share price has fallen. I've seen that a lot. And in fact, this chart looks absolutely ugly, but I wonder if it's getting to an interesting price and valuation. Maybe not. It's getting down to 2020 lows. So if I see the share price of this company get to say 220, 230, I would be interested. That is the lows during the COVID-19 and the lows in 2019. In fact, if we go back further, yeah, that would be that would be an interesting level. I could consider myself taking a sneaky a position in Metcash uh, if it does get down that low. But at this point in time, I'm not interested. Uh, site miter shares rise on quarter one growth, reiterated financial year guidance. I did not see that announcement at all. So let's put in site miter. Shares up 1.69%. I would say that's just a bit of noise. And yeah, I don't see anything. They didn't release any announcements. I'm not sure where Capital Brief is getting that news flow from. Templar Webstar shares dropped despite sales lift. That company did not make it in my top five stocks. It was a possibility, but it did not make it. And there's IGO, yep. And Paladin Energy shares dive on acquisition doubts. And that company is in my top five stocks of the day. Okay, so let's get to the ASX today. And let's have a look at the best and worst performing sectors and indices first. So I would suggest that energy is down. Energy is not as down as much as only down 0.46%. So what's happened? Why is oil down a lot? But energy is not down um, that much. And then Woodside, Santos, and Kroon, not down at all. In fact, real estate and utilities have had a worse day than energy. That is surprising. Really good day for IT. Really good, good day for discretionary. And in fact, let's have a look at what has driven IT up today. Is it Wise Tech, which is by far the biggest company in this sector? And not only is it Wise Tech, but Zero, Next DC, Technology One, Line 360, Coden, Newix, and Macquarie Technology Group all have had a really good day, up over 1%. In fact, most of them up over 2%. And this might be because NASDAQ had a pretty good day last Friday versus the Dow Jones. NASDAQ was up, Dow Jones was down. So that has that performance on the NASDAQ has translated to our tech companies on the ASX today. Okay, so that's interesting in itself. Discretionary up 1.18. What's happening there? Is it because Mosaic Brands has entered voluntary administration and the market's gone, oh, that's a good sign for the other retail companies? Uh, let's see what's happened here. West Farmers, Aristocrats, and they are by far the two biggest companies. I'm just looking at the market cap of those two companies. West Farmers is 78 billion, in fact, nearly 79 billion. Aristocrat is 38 billion, and then the Lottery Corporation is 11 billion, and that's the only three companies above 10 billion. So this particular sector is heavily weighted to West Farmers and Aristocrat leisure, or leisure, depending on where you're born and grew up. And yeah, looking at the indices, ASX20 up 0.13%. Have a quick look at that. I would assume maybe 10 up, 10 down. Now, I'm going to say 12 up, 8 down. No, I'm going to say 8 up, 12 down. Oh, I should have not changed it. So 11 up, 8 down, 1 flat. And the best performing companies, we have Fortescue, West Farmers, Rio Tinto. So uh, Iron Ore's had a good day. BHP is up. Talk about that company uh, later. Uh, so it looks like that's just noise, which is interesting because they did release something significant today, uh, What's or maybe what seems something significant. And the worst performing companies in the ASX 20, Goodman Group, ANZ, CSL, CBA, and NAB. So it looks like the banks and financials have not had a good day today. And to be honest with you, that's not a surprise to me. In fact, they could have a bad day for the next three weeks, and it would not be a surprise to me at all. Okay, so let's get to the best and worst performing companies on the ASX. Do have to be a little bit quicker. Uh, so a company called Asian Battery Metals up 61.7%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
pick out two of these companies and that's it. And then I'll have a look at buy market cap. Uh, and so I'm going to keep this brief as possible. So I'm just going to see if Asian battery metals have released something. AZ9. AZ9. They would have had to release drilling results or something for the share price to be this high. Or maybe an acquisition of a project, maybe silver and gold in Mexico. That seems to be an in thing. Maybe not Mexico because it's called Asian battery metals. Maybe Kazakhstan or somewhere like that. Okay, so outstanding copper, nickel, discovery uh wonder what outstanding is and where where in asia do they have their project uh so they've just gone through some uh, drilling results and mongolia there you go uh could this be the only company mining in mongolia that i know uh maybe and more than likely within a few days i'm going to forget this company I would say this is a newly listed company based off their tier code AZ9, just because it's got a number in there. So within the last six years, it's probably listed. And well, it's listed in June this year. Uh, would I consider this to be a breakout? Well, we have a very limited sample size here, so don't really have much charting to go on. Uh, and I suppose, yeah, it's an okay chart. Uh, bit of selling today, however. Share price to get as high as 11 cents. Now it's 7.6 cents. I don't like that. Don't like how much selling we have seen today for Asian battery metals, but put this into my high volume spec. And the other company I saw that was up big on fairly big turnover was Trig Minerals. Notice uh, Vection Technology is up as well. So Trig Minerals, did this company release anything today? And they did. SW Limey drilling discovery of a new epithermal system. And let's have a look at the chart for Trig, TMG. And this chart looks pretty good. I like this chart. I like this chart a lot. And I would assume this chart is in this company. No, it's not. This company is making waves. Uh, beautiful looking chart. Nice. You can see, you can see the spike in volume. On the 12th of June, a spike in volume. And I've mentioned a few times now, or more than a few times, that I have read that a lot of times volume precedes price action. And a lot of times you'll see this one spike in volume, nothing much happens, share price goes sideways, and then all of a sudden share price rises on increasing volume. Uh, so this is maybe further proof, trig minerals. Share price has increased from one cent up to 4.7 cents. Good looking chart, nice increase in volume, and then a peak in volume today. And the other company, I'll just briefly look at the chart for Vection One because this is a company in an interesting space. They have released some interesting announcements the last few weeks, but share price has been in a pretty ugly downtrend for a long time, and it is showing a bit of uh, signs of life right now. Again, volume. Look at the volume. We're seeing some big volume come in the last few weeks. Share price as low as 0.7 cents not that long ago. Now it's 1.9 cents. Okay, so let's have a look at the best performing companies by market. See if I missed anything here. Vulcan Energy. They did release something today. So... I did, I wouldn't say I missed it, but the market likes it. Vulcan achieves world first S&P global dark green rating. The market likes it. Now, to be honest with you, I don't mind the chart either. I think the chart for Vulcan Energy is looking pretty sweet. Uh, share price was in a bit of a downtrend, and it broke out of that downtrend back on the 25th of September. At that point in time, the share price was around about $4. Now it's $5.15. And I do like this chart. Nice little pullback. Hit the short-term moving average channel. And we have recorded a new high today for Vulcan Energy. So some good buying coming in for this particular company. Elsewhere, we have VCI Minerals, Ioneer, Sivmec, which is a company I am trading right now. Uh, one of you, I'm very confused by this one. One view up 7.6%. This company did release their Appendix 4C today. I've been following this company for a long, long time, and their receipts aren't growing. This company is not growing at all, yet the markup of this company is $220 million. Uh, so maybe the share price is up because Baxter, VAR extension expansion. But whenever I open up this company's Appendix 4C, I just go, okay, it's just the same as what we've seen in the past for the last eight years or so. So recessed customers, 3.7 million euros. Operating cash flow negative, not positive, negative, and free cash flow negative as well. 
So I didn't see anything to like in that particular um, Appendix 4C. The market thinks differently, up 6%. Now let's have a look at the chart for one view. Health. Yeah. And chart not really screaming out to me. Share price was in a nice uptrend from the middle of 2023, but is sort of struggling. Got to a high of about 42 cents not that long ago, so July and didn't get to a new high in September. So not the biggest fan of this particular chart. And to be honest with you, not the biggest fan of the company itself, particularly the valuation. Last time I looked, it was $220 million. And what is it now? $222 million. yeah. I need to see a little bit more traction in the business for me to get excited. And I'm going to end it there for, oh, integrated research is up. Let's have a look at the chart for integrated research. This is an interesting one. The share price of this company is just all over the place. Uh, it goes on, this definitely is, the share price of this company just moves on sentiment. So it's it broke out back in May, a beautiful, I think it was a beautiful trading update. Share price went all the way back almost to $1, then fell all the way back down to about 50 cents and has been on runs really, uh, really, I wouldn't say significant runs, but you can see the share price got sold off in about eight consecutive days from share price about 78 cents down to 60 cents. And then today, the selling has stopped and the buying has come back in. Uh, so interesting chart. I did take some profits with Integrate Research and I do have a longer term holding. But the share price falls below about 55 cents. I will sell the rest of my holding in this company. So that's Integrated Research. Now let's have a look at the top losers today. Equinox Resources. And Vinyl Group, though there's two companies I'm going to be looking at. Or oh, Arkansas Medical. Oh, there's Paladin. Uh, let's have a look at Equinox Resources, E, Q, and if it's an equity raising, I'm going to move on. Section 18, Decision, Hammersley, Iron Ore, Mining, Lease. Okay, I do know about this one because there was something really interesting in the announcement. So that's the only reason I know that because there was something really interested in this particular announcement. And I'll just talk about it. I'll just actually highlight it. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so some sort of application was, was uh, declined. And this is the reasons uh, it was declined. This application was declined due to concerns regarding potential impacts on two newly identified Aboriginal ethnographic sites from a 2023 Heritage Survey conducted by Eula Heritage Services, blah, blah, blah. The two new, new, newly identified sites are the Elini Range, associated with stories and songs, and Walka Jaramana Wuntu, an ancestral water serpent believed to have created the waterway shown in figure one. I found that really interesting. Uh, so that's why the share price is down, because this particular application has been declined because... I suppose these two sites are significant for the Aboriginal cultures in that particular area. Now, say what you want about that. Uh, I'm not going to mention anything else, but it's just interesting to me. And, of course, the share price has. You know, before this announcement, the share price was under a bit of pressure. Share price had just moved into a downtrend. Another instance where if you just look at the charts, maybe the charts could help you out. You would have missed this. So that's Equinox, Vinyl Group, and Onconsol. I'm pretty sure I saw both of these companies in the announcements today. Onconsol, yeah, equity raising. So I'm going to move on to Vinyl Group. So this is a company that used to be called Jackstar, V-L-Y? No, V-Y-L. What's the T code? Oh, V-N-L. V-N-L, yeah. This is a company I used, I used to be called Jackstar. They've made a lot of acquisitions, and that's how they're growing the company. And this company, Connote and Option Purchase Conversion Exercise. Okay, that's boring as well. Uh, let's have a look at the chart for Vinyl and Onconsole, and we'll move on to the worst performing companies by Margap. So this is Vinyl Group. And in fact, yesterday, Friday, uh, share price rallied a lot. Jeez, it went up 33% and it's just pulled back. An interesting chart, but yeah. And Onconsole. Oh, trend was changing, wasn't it? It was trying to change, and today it looks like because of this placement, uh, might there might be a little bit more negative sentiment in Ongood Soul. 
Oh, okay, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but we'll need to see if that is confirmed. Who knows, the share price might continue on a rally from here. Now let's have a look by market cap. See if I missed anything. Have not missed Paladin. Talk about that. Uh, a lot of mining companies here. Silver mines, not surprising there. How did ASL go today? Andean silver, up down 3.5%. It's not surprising. Uh, notice that silver was down. There's Sun Silver. So it looks like Andean Silver didn't do as bad as Silver Mines and Sun Silver. So that's a positive. Uh, and Mithril, Silver and Gold. They did release something today and I missed it. Advertus did release their pennies for C. I actually did find that a little bit intriguing. Ad Advertus. I haven't never looked at that company before. Uh, they're not operating cash flow positive, but the cash receipts have grown significantly over the last few quarters. And that is the first thing I look for, growing receipts. And Advertus or Adveritus is doing that. Uh, so I won't talk about that company in today's video. I might do a standalone video on Adveritus because I don't think I've ever done a video on that company before. Anyway, so nothing of note there except really Paladin, some silver companies and Adveritus. Now let's have a look at the top five stocks of the day. And we'll start off with Mosaic Brands because it's always, I suppose, a sad day when a company goes into voluntary administration. And I'll be honest with you, this was not a surprise. This should not be a surprise. This company was under a lot of trouble. They were trying to, if I remember correctly, they're going to sell off some of their less notable brands. So this company owns Miller's, Rockman's, Noni B, Rivers, Katie's, Autograph, W Lane, Crossroads, and B Me. And to be honest with you, I don't know anything about quite a few of those. I do know Rivers. I've heard of Noni B. Maybe Millers. I uh, definitely heard of Katie's, but the rest don't know. Uh, anyway, so this company has been under pressure. I really delved deeply into this company about three or four years ago. And there was one thing I was really unsure about Mosaic brands and how they existed or survived. And that had to do with their balance sheet. Had to do with their assets and their liabilities. Uh, might have a look at that in a second. But anyway, they've moved or entered voluntary administration. This does not mean the end of the company. Uh, so you've got to get that straight. It does not mean it's the end of the company. However, Mosaic Senior Secured Lender has appointed a KPMG as receivers and managers to work, work alongside the administrators through the restructure process. So it all depends how this restructure process goes. There could be something at the other end. So this is not necessarily a goodbye to Mosaic Brands, but this should not be a shock to shareholders and to the market, to be honest with you. Um, according to this, a small number of parties declined to support the restructuring proposal or negotiate a commercial outcome, and a commercially acceptable resolution could not be reached with the ACCC. Okay, so I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into this. So it looks like there is a bit of pushback in regards to this restructuring, because they did announce a few, yeah, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, that they were selling off a few of their brands. I think I mentioned that. Uh, so maybe there's been pushback against that, which I don't understand why there'll be pushback against that. It'll be weird, because the next step after, if they can't do this restructuring, the next step would be voluntary administration. Anyway, so let's have a look. First, let's have a look at the chart. So my first question would be why? Why would you be a shareholder in this company? There was nothing. There's nothing. The share, share price of this company has been under pressure for many years. Uh, there was a time I liked it. If we go back to 2020, this little period here, I was actually trading this company. Share price was moving up. The chart looked pretty good. And there was a big down day on the 24th of February. So that would have been results. And that was the get out. That was a get out sign. You could have sold on that day for, for about 85 cents. And since then, there's been a few times when it looks like the share price was trying to rally, but nothing came out of it. And there was a big down day on the 8th of June, 2022, probably a negative trading update. Share price dropped 56% on that day. And the share price has kept on falling since then. And share price now down to 3.6 cents. And I'm going to just show you uh, Mosaic Brands, probably the latest annual report, if they do have it here. Oh, they probably haven't released it because they've been in suspension. Yeah, timing of preliminary financial report. That's right. They haven't released it yet. So we have to go back one year ago. We'll have a look at the annual report uh, or maybe just for Appendix 4E and financial report. There was one thing I've been always been confused about this company. I did get once 
someone tried to explain it to me why it's something to do with their net their net current assets and or yeah the current assets versus current liabilities and current liabilities were always greater than current assets by a significant amount i was like how does this company survive when the current liabilities are significantly greater than current assets and the one explanation i did receive is that this company has significant turnover so if you continue to turn over you can a company like this can survive when the net uh, current liabilities are greater than their, their not the current liabilities are greater than their current assets so let's have a look at their most recent released appendix not appendix, appendix 4e I was going to say Appendix 4C. So let's see if that is true. Yeah, it's true here. So this is 2022-2023. Net or total current assets, 149 million, and total current liabilities, 292 million. So that is typically a fairly big red flag. Uh, you don't want to really want to see that uh, because that tells you this company could have uh, all these liabilities due and they won't be able to pay it with their assets, with their cash, inventories, receivables. So that's why this person who tried to explain to me said, if a company has a lot of turnover, that could explain why or how a company can survive when their current liabilities are significantly greater than the current assets. Then I did have a look at the history of this company and it wasn't always like this. If you go back maybe seven or eight years ago, their current assets were greater than their current liabilities. So this is a new thing. So that's the only explanation I have received. If a company has really high or, I suppose, really high turnover, they can survive uh, in this sort of scenario. Anyway, uh, anyway, so that was a significant red flag for me and they've had further red flags for me and other red flags I can't think about right now. But that was the red flag that I did notice about three or four years ago. And I've always been wondering about that ever since. I don't know if that's the reason why this company is under pressure. But anyway, that's Mosaic Brands into voluntary administration. Coming in number five. Coming in at number four, a better story here. A feel-good story, mate. Well, no, not necessarily so. Share price up 5.6%. Ventura Health. I thought maybe this could be the pivot point for the company. Thought maybe the share price uh, might have increased a little bit more. Share price did get above 10 cents, 10.5 cents. I thought maybe a little bit more. If share price remained above 10 cents, that would be a good move. Now, if we have a look at the summary right now, yeah, there's not much above 9.5 cents. I, there's no way I would have sold today this company if I had shares in it because I think there's a good chance the share price will get above 10 cents and maybe even stay above 10 cents. And you can see there's not much sellers below 10 and a half cents. Ooh, I could buy it. Maybe I'll oh, maybe I'll buy some shares. Uh, if you have the cost of sales, so there's a bit of selling in the closing auction. And yeah, the share price was above 10 cents at or above 10 cents for much of the day. Okay, so there's a little bit of selling towards the end. Okay, so what did this company release that has got me a little bit more interested in this company? Strategy Reset, Strategy Reset delivers positive first quarter results. So uh, this company does not have a moat. That's the first thing I'd say about this company. It has no moat and there was more competition and their margin started to decrease because of the increasing competition and they went through this strategy reset or whatever uh, they're calling it. Uh, so they seems like this strategy reset is paying dividends, not literally dividends at this point in time. Although this company has been a dividend paying company in the past. This is a um, cannabis company to do with cannabis. Anyway, uh, they did say some positive things. Uh, for instance, uh, the strategy reset announced in May 2024 is having a positive impact on financial performance with Ventura trading on or ahead of budget for all major financial indicators at the end of the first quarter, financial year 2024. And they go through some of those down the bottom here. Yeah, so looks like they are performing better than they expected. Uh, EBITDA profit, so revenue in line with budget, EBITDA and net profit are both trending ahead of budget. So things, are, uh, you know, this company's performing a little bit better than management expected. That's usually a good sign. Okay, so let's have a look at the chart for Vatura. Now, the share price has been under pressure because the company has been under pressure. And maybe this is the pivot point, a turnaround. Share price, not long ago, above $1. When I say not long ago, I'm talking about 2022. Share price went from a dollar down to below 10 cents. So it's got about a 90% drop in share price in a fairly short period of time. Okay. Uh, interesting enough, 
there was a bit of a rally in the share price. Uh, a little pop up in share price on the 9th of October. At that point in time, the share price was below eight cents. And we saw two really good days on the 17th and 18th of October. Share price went all the way up to 12 cents. Now the share price has pulled back, but it's a little bit of selling today, some good volume coming in. So maybe those who want to sell have sold. So if I do see the share price get above 10 cents and stay above 10 cents, that would be a really powerful, healthy move for Vitura. So I think there is potential. Maybe things are turning positive for Vitura. Now, maybe I just want to wait to see some signals, some maybe some confirmation with the chart, or maybe even, um, I'm not sure if the company does release a pennies 4C, or maybe another positive announcement from the company. Uh, and maybe if they do release another positive announcement, the share price can start or continue to move upwards. Anyway, so that's Ventura Health. Uh, I'm not even sure what the market is for this company. Let's have a look. I would assume maybe 50 million, 54.71 million. Okay, so that's Ventura Health. Uh, yeah, I don't mind that at all. Uh, okay, coming in number three, we have the first of the three mining companies, Adriatic Metals. Share price down 4.88%. Was down by more than that. I'm just having a look at the low. Down to $3.83. I'm not surprised by this because the company did release their quality activities report and cash flow. So this is a silver producer in Croatia or Bosnia, somewhere in that area. I think it might be Bosnia. I'm thinking about it. My memory can be deceiving. So it's in that sort of general area. Uh, they probably do mention it somewhere. The Vares Silver or Vares Silver. Do they say where it is? Oh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I forget Bosnia is not just Bosnia. It's also got that another name, Herzegovina. Uh, oh, and Serbia. They have stuff, uh, something in Serbia as well. Okay, so the most important thing about this was they're now in production. And I just want to see what the cash flow was like or the cash receipts. Uh, and I got a little bit of a shock here. I went, oh, is that it? $863,000 US dollars. Went, oh, is that it? So they're still burning through a lot of cash. Uh, and when I say burning through a lot of cash, uh, operating cash flow negative by 10.8 million and free cash flow negative by 27 million. So still burning through a lot of cash. I Look, I don't know this company all that well, but this is a silver producer. And I thought, oh, thought, not expected, but I just thought, this company would have more than $1 million in receipts because they're now in production. So I'm just going to wait until the following, what, what quarter are we in now? The December quarter, just to see how much their production has increased in the past three months. Because I'm not sure when they started production. Maybe they've only had three days of production, uh, but they do expect production to increase. Uh, for instance, production, so 63.1 kilotons all mined. Uh, da, 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 da. Production ramp up continues and production guidance for 2024 is approximately 180,000 tons mined with 225 guidance set at between 750,000 and 800,000 tons. So they're really ramping up um, production over the next, we'll say, uh, 12 months or so. And they also had a fatal accident. Anyway, so the market didn't like it. Sort of, I think the market had the same thoughts as I did, but I did read the ramping up production. And I thought, oh, okay, that might be that might be positive for the company moving forward. Uh, anyway, again, this company's share price is going to move with silver, and it sort of did today. So maybe the market didn't expect much from Adriatic's uh, pennies four or five B, and that's why we have seen the share price drop in line with other silver companies. Now, apart from that, share price or the chart starting to look pretty good. There was a big drop in share price. And the share price is recovering. Uh, so you could have bought some Adriatic Metals at $2.50 not that long ago. Uh, and I don't mind this chart, Adriatic Metals. So it's uh, coming in number three, Adriatic Metals. It looks like maybe their first, in fact, I'm going to confirm it right now. I'm going to say their first uh, receipts they've received. Let's go back to July. Did they receive any receipts in this particular quarter? So this is very important, just to compare receipts. 211,000. So they did receive a little bit of receipts, but so it's gone from 211,000 to 800,000. So um, I suppose there is a ramp up in receipts, but probably expect a little bit more. So Ajax Metals coming in at number three. Coming in at number two, we have BHP Group, the largest mining company in the world, the largest company on the ASX, 
and share price is up 1.34%. However, other iron ore companies are up as well. So um, maybe that's why the share price of BHP Group is up. Uh, so Summerco update, Brazil settlement negotiations. Oh, no way there. Summerco update, final agreement with public authorities. So that previous announcement released last week, almost to the week, uh, was not marked sensitive. This one was marked sensitive because this was the final agreement. And it's pretty big. So for those who don't remember, there was a pretty bad mining dam disaster in Brazil 2016. Uh, what's it called? The Summerco Fundal Dam Failure uh, 2015. Terrible tragedy. Well, oh, this is a quote. Terrible tragedy. It should never have happened and must never be forgotten. So as shadows in the Summerco. So Summerco is a joint venture between BHP Brazil and Vale. Valet, that's how you pronounce it, not Vale, Valet. Uh, anyway, so the settlement is for 34 billion, 31.7 US billion dollars. Yes, 31.7 billion US dollars. And this is actually an interesting announcement because they go through what they have to do with this money. Uh, so it's not. It's not a lump sum straight away. It's over about 15 years, 18 years, or well, 19 years here. So $11 billion in the first year, $7 billion, five, five, and then all the way down to financial year 2043, $4.4 billion. And then they go through what they have to do. Here it is. So they have to have some parties. I'm sorry, that's, that's a bad joke. Uh, that's not what I wanted to look at. So this is what they have to do. Munip municipalities, health. So funding for the creation of a perpetual fund to strengthen the public health system in the affected regions. By the way, this is a really bad disaster. So there was 19 lives lost, but it could have destroyed many livelihoods. Uh, so have a read or have a look at what happened when this dam broke or failed. And apparently there were, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to actually, not going to say anything because I did read something a while ago that there were signs or harbingers that this might happen and some people ignored it. I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened or if I misread it. Anyway, fishing. So they have to go fishing. Uh, funding for the creation of federal and state perpetual funds to strengthen fishing activity in the Dosi River, which is maybe the river which was affected. So, again, this would have affected many people's livelihoods. Water sanitation, state projects, program for women, other community funding, uh, indigenous and traditional communities, uh, identification and compensation. Uh, yep. And community resettlement environment as well. Anyway, that's BHP, but I think the market expected it. This is the largest company on the ASX, the biggest mining company in the world. So there's would be a lot of analysis who on top of this. So this was not a surprise. That's why the share price has not dropped. And this is a chart for BHP. Again, it just follows iron ore prices to an abs what I wouldn't say absolutely, but I always laugh when people say, or experts say, well, if you really want to, if you're really bullish on copper, just buy BHP. No, BHP share price won't follow copper. It will follow iron ore. You won't get the benefits if copper increases significantly. BHP group, if iron ore drops, BHP will drop. You won't get the benefits of copper rising. You need a copper play. Not, And I will not call BHP a copper play. I would call BHP an iron ore play. Now, they do have their fingers in a lot of different pies, but still, it's an iron ore company. Okay, so that's BHP coming in at number two. Now, coming in number one, we have Paladin Energy. Share price down at 15%. Share price was down by even more than that. Low of the day was $9.52. So we're talking about the share price decreasing maybe 22 23% at the low in the day. Now, the company did release a cash flow report and activities. Now, I did not know Paladin is in production. That was a little bit of a surprise to me, and I discovered that just by looking at Appendix 5B. This is one of the reasons I look at Appendix 5B. So it says the customer is $24.7 million uh, US dollars. Now, they're not in, they're not operating cash flow or, or free cash flow positive. In fact, they're still burning through lots and lots of cash. Okay, so I'm not sure if that is what caused the negative share price today. Now, I did notice in Capital Brief, they mentioned... Paladin down because shares dive on acquisition doubts. Okay, so 
after the uranium producer cast doubts over its acquisition of Canada's fission uranium. Uh, is that why the share price dropped because of that? Uh, the company also flagged that it encountered some short-term operational challenges during the September quarter, which impacted all feed recovery rates and production volumes. Okay, so we have two possibilities why the share price dropped. Doubts over an acquisition or short-term operational challenges. I'm going to choose short-term operational challenges as the main reason why the share price plunged today, not doubts about this acquisition. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I yeah, that's what I would go to. Uh, anyway. What's this other bit? Uh, yeah. I want to see if there's any analysis who said he mentioned anything. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm going to say about Paladin in regards to this. I think it's just that uh, challenging September operations or something like that, whatever they said there. Uh, I don't care about the acquisition, and I don't think the market cares all that much, to be honest. And let's have a look at the chart for Paladin. Now, I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, tell me about it. If this uh, doubts about this acquisition are causing you grief in the share price and you just sell your shares in Paladin, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, this is a chart for Paladin. So the low of the day, in fact, I'm going to look at the five-minute chart. So when was a low? It doesn't look like it was on open. Yeah, the share price plunged. Do, 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 do. So this shows me it took a little bit of time for the announcement to digest, for the market to digest the announcement. Uh, so the low was actually reached 40 minutes after no, that's actually not 40 minutes. That's an hour and 40 minutes after shares had opened. So that tells me that there was a bit of digestion of the market. And that also uh, lends, lends credence to the fact that it was more than likely the September, uh, whatever they mentioned, the um, challenging September or quarterly um, stuff, whatever they mentioned. Anyway, so that's Paladin. Uh, by the way, the charts. Uh, there was a nice little rally in uranium. So, again, just like BHP Paladin's energy share price will mirror uranium prices. So you do have to understand that. That is one of the main things you have to understand about mining companies. The price of mining companies will mirror the underlying commodity. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, Paladin Energy coming in at number one, the stock of the day. Okay, I'm going to look at a few of your – oh, before I do that, Bonix. Now, nah. okay, Vonix, so there is a takeover uh, battle for Vonix between Swoop and also another company called Max Tell Co. Share price of Vonix has been has dropped significantly over the last few years. Now, this company has in the past been operating cash flow positive, and share price has turned positive because of this uh, takeover battle. But you can see over the past few years, share price has just plunged. The company did release their pennies for C, and I would suggest to management, just say no to the takeover bid battle. Just say no because, because receipts, $12.8 million. You are operating cash flow positive by $1.1 million in a quarter. You have hit the big time. You are operating cash flow positive. Say no. And I can understand perfectly why there is a bidding war for this company. It's probably really cheap. Vonix is really cheap. They are operating cash flow positive. So let's have a look at the market for Vonix. $15.9 million, operating cash flow positive. And I suppose growing a little bit. So I think these two companies, uh, Maxtel and Soup, see really good value in Vonix. And if these two companies are seeing really good value, I think management of Vonix should say, get lost to, the, to, to these two parties. That's just my opinion. Uh, I'm going to go through some of your comments and we'll start off with Tinker 312. Hi, Neppy. Appreciate the segment you did on Dell the other day. Have you looked at IMB, which is Intellibit Monitoring Systems, before? I think they would meet your buy criteria. Wondering your thoughts. Probably my biggest concerns about IMB is the debt, Intelligent Monitoring Group. Now, this company does quite a few acquisitions, that sort of thing. And if we do have a look at their most recent, didn't have a look at their annual report. At the most recent appendix 4C, so they re should release their current appendix 4C very soon, within the next few days. My only concerns about this company is their debt. So we're looking at financing facilities in Section 7, $82.9 million of debt. So that is the main concern. And this company has been highly acquisitive or heavily acquisitive. They've been acquiring so many stuff, uh, so much, so many other companies. But in saying that, 
receipts, 36.7 million, and operating cash flow positive, 3.7 million. So there is a possibility if they do generate a fair bit of cash flow in their operations, they might be able to pay back that debt. So there is that possibility. Uh, but free cash flow positive by only about $800,000. Now, in saying all that, the chart does look good. So my concerns about the company aside, the chart looks fantastic. A really good looking chart for Intelligent Monitoring Group. Um, there's nothing you can say negative about this chart. So my only concerns is about the company and the debt. But I think they are moving in the right direction. And so thank you for that question. Pinker, Sensei, are you still holding Findy? Yes. They were 62 cents, 62 cents a share a year ago and now 621. So technically, this is a 10 bagger for me. Technically, Findy is a 10 bagger. I have taken a small amount of profit, but even though I've taken a small amount of profit, it's still one of my largest holdings and the share price keeps on going up. So I have no intentions of taking further profits with Findy. And you're right. Yes, not that long ago, share price was really low. And this was a case where I exercised some options back in January at 90 cents. The, ch the, ch the chart just kept on going up. I probably shouldn't have even taken profits. Uh, but it's now one of my largest holdings because the share price just keeps on going up, but I'm not taking profits anymore. Uh, one thing I'd like to see is higher volume coming through, by the way. Okay, that's all I have for this particular video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.